open by reading two of the state statutes uh, that he'll be addressing thoroughly. First being 29-1402, grand jury convening. No limitation on right to prosecute by information. The convening of a grand jury shall in no way limit the right of prosecution on information or complaint during the time the grand jury is in session. And finally, statute 29-1410-01 reads, request to testify or appear, denial how treated. Any person may approach the prosecuting attorney or the grand jury and request to testify or retestify in an inquiry before a grand jury or to appear before a grand jury. The prosecuting attorney or the grand jury shall keep a record of all such denials of such requests to that prosecuting attorney or grand jury, including the reasons for not allowing such person to testify or appear. If the person making such request is dissatisfied with the decision of the prosecuting attorney or the grand jury, such person may petition the court for hearing on the denial by the prosecuting attorney or the grand jury. If the court grants the hearing, then the court may permit the person to testify or appear before the grand jury if the court finds that such testimony or appearance would serve the interests of justice. Thank you, Pastor Beller. Can everyone hear me? Okay, the reason why I called this press conference is when you look at the press conference that Don Klein gave, he was clear and he stated that under Nebraska law, self-defense, we're not here to debate that. What we're focused on is what misdemeanor crimes were committed. The misdemeanor crimes that were committed by Mr. Gardner are punishable. Don Klein stated in the press conference that if Mr. Cusey goes after him, he has 18 months. Okay, it's been 30 days since James Gardner, uh, Jake Gardner, killed James It's been 30 days since we've heard anything about prosecution other than the grand jury um, meeting to see if there's going to be an indictment. But within those 30 days, I'm wondering clearly about the toxicology tests. Um, I did receive an email back from Mr. Cusey, and he said to his knowledge there was no toxicology, which would make me wonder why not. The information on Mr. Scurlock was disclosed, and what we're just asking for the city prosecutor to do his job. Based off of what Don Klein said, again, it's not hearsay. This isn't my opinion. This is what Don Klein said. And all we're asking from the prosecutor, do your job. There are, he concealed a firearm in his waistband. I have the Nebraska statutes 28-1202. 28-310, 69-2441, Now, again, was a report completed with the Nebraska State Patrol? And if there was one re completed, we never saw it. Um, Mr. Uh, Cusey never said whether one was completed or not, so I sent Eric Kaufman with the Nebraska State Patrol copy also. Uh, I'm waiting for a reply from him. But as the people of Omaha, all we're asking for is for the prosecutor to do his job. We're not asking for anything outlandish, anything unreal, unreasonable. Just do your job. I couldn't walk away from a charge like this. I don't think anybody in here could. And 
you know, we're tired of the double standard. Nobody is above the law. And I reached out to Mayor Stopter. I don't know if she has responded. I've been kind of busy, but I'm hoping she does. And I would like to point out everyone in here that's behind me, they read the letter, they signed it. These are people that are just asking for a fair shake. That's all. Prosecutor uh, Cusey, it's his job to do this for the city of Omaha. It's his job for the people. It's his job, and in, in no way does it intercede, it doesn't connect, it has nothing to do with the grand jury. And that was his response to me. That was why I had Pastor Beller read that beginning, which is a Nebraska statute. Not my opinion, not my law, but the law under Nebraska. So I have a couple people here with me that will be speaking. The letter, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. It speaks for itself. Um, it took me a while to, I watched the video maybe three or four times over. I slowed it down. I, I took steals from it. And we're just asking for justice, you know. Justice by way of doing your job. If you can't do your job, then we're going to make a special request for the FBI to come in and do the job. Because at this point, we're 30 days in. And you have a guy saying he's going to be on fire watch duty four hours before this happened. You have protesters that were down there. You have an order to stay away. But yet, a person broke the law by carrying a concealed weapon and brandishing it in public and used it. So within 36 hours, you're telling me nothing? No. All we're asking, do your job. Don Klein laid it out for uh, Prosecutor Cusey. He laid it out. He laid it out for me. And again, it's not my words. Nobody behind me. Under the state of Nebraska, there's the statutes. Just do it. Don't pass it off. Don't, don't take the easy way out. Do your job. If there's something going on we don't know about, let us know. Because no one in this room can walk away from that. If you look at his past record, and we're not here to debate that, but there are other cases. I don't know Mr. Gardner at all. Never met him, never spoke to him. None of the racist things matter to me. I'm just looking at the law. That's it. Any questions? It's a misdemeanor offense. You're putting a lot of pressure on this for a misdemeanor offense that the grand jury is looking into as well. Uh, obviously, the main case is whether or not it was self-defense or not, which the grand jury will decide. Why is are you, why are you so concerned about the misdemeanor offenses? Because you feel that you be treated differently. He was a black man. Is it the disparity? Is there a reason why you, you're more concerned about the, the misdemeanor offense at this point? With the misdemeanor offense, it would it would bring forth a, a further investigation, not a 36-hour investigation. I mean, we can't find a law of dog in 36 hours, let alone find out whether a crime was committed, whether murder was committed or not within 36 hours. So we know if Prosecutor Cusey does a full investigation and brings in witnesses based off of what uh, Mr. Gardner violated, then yeah, that information, I believe, can help. I don't see how it could. Um, and to show you what I believe was a rush to judgment, why are they still asking for witnesses? There was two, 3,000 people downtown with phones recorded, and, and you're telling me within 36 hours everybody was interviewed and recorded? Everybody gave a statement? No. Or they wouldn't be posting pictures saying, hey, if you know her, if you know him, have him contact us. So this investigation that the prosecutor can open that will allow more people to come forward that haven't said anything. That will allow him to subpoena people that may not want to talk. I don't want to make this about race. 
But I know I couldn't do that. That's why I said nobody in this room could. Robert, you talked about in preparation for today, re-watching that video a number of times, taking stills from it, things like that. Talk to me about, I guess, the difficulty of that process. How hard was that to go back through that time after time? Uh, it, anytime someone loses their life, it's difficult under any circumstances to watch, you know, to watch a man die. Um, and like I said, this took me weeks. I'm sitting at home every night on the couch, wondering, okay, did I miss something? And I, I don't see how within 36 hours you have a clear-cut <laughs> decision made. So yeah, it is difficult for anybody to watch it. And there, there's points in the video where, okay, after the shooting, they immediately walk inside. Why did they walk away if the police were present? Why does the video stop at certain points? We go from color to black and white with the same angles. So yeah, there, there, there's more questions than our answers after watching the press conference. Robert, you brought up um, the, the third degree assault. Are you saying that's against Gardner or is that against the dad for that the original push that started it? Even if you pursue charges against the father, and I really feel like that's important. You have a young lady, I, I've heard reports that she was intoxicated, I don't know. But you have a young lady that was pushed very violently twice. And I believe those actions are what led up to them. They would not have been confronted, you know, had he not pushed them. the elder guard. So yeah, the, uh, the anger, the intent was there. They were angry about their windows. They were outside and they had a firearm, which was expired. So that makes it illegal. It, it, it's not really difficult. <laughs> What else did, uh, did Mr. Pizzi say to you in the response? Just the toxicology, or did he say anything else? Um, he said, well, I Well, he was basically saying the grand jury, they've indicted people before on misdemeanors. Omaha police officer was indicted by a grand jury for third degree assault. Uh, he has to respect the integrity of the grand jury process since it has commenced. Uh, he has to respect the work of the special prosecutor and not interfere. He's saying any action he takes to damage the integrity of the process, and, and no, that's not true. Um, he's not aware of any test results that were done. He also said that doesn't mean it didn't happen, he's just not aware of it. Uh, he said that question is better posed to either the Omaha Police Department or the State Patrol. And that's how it is. So again, <laughs> We're just asking you to do your job. It's laid out for you. That's all. Robert, do you have confidence in the grand jury? What's that? Do you have confidence in the grand jury yourself? No. I don't know. Why not? That's just my opinion. <laughs> just me. You know, I've seen them come together many times and walk away. Um, and, you know, this isn't me, this isn't <laughs> my personal feelings, all I'm saying, do your job. Mr. Cusey, fine, I respect Don Fine, always have, I feel like he's an honorable man, uh, he took the easy way out. Um, and now it's on QZ, and no, I'm, I'm not going to let QZ take the easy way out on this one. Sorry. The family deserves that much respect. The citizens of Omaha deserve that much respect. People of color deserve that much respect. So, no, not on this one. I have April who's going to speak this year. Oh. 
you have any other questions, I'll be available. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 